back here with Coach Me and Jeannie. We're going viral. Nick, you got pumped yesterday when Frank Clark sacked Ryan Tannehill on fourth down to essentially end the game, send the Chiefs to Super Bowl 54. After the game, Clark was fired up too. Take a listen. Had two games in each game, 70 yards, over 200 yards each game. I know damn well we wasn't going to win the game. We let that happen. They come in here, he ran for 70 yards. They call him the best rush in the league. We sit in this home early. I posted the comments that you said to me, and all over social media, everybody said, you better watch your back, that you're saying things that you can't cash. Everybody on social media is saying, back. they must not know who I am yet. They're going to find out sooner or later when I got that ring on my finger. At the end of the day, we champions. AFC, that trophy that got my own the last name on it, that's the KC. That's KC. Ain't no fall off. Last year, jump off sides, all that. I told him when I got here, there's no change. Look at the we the best world. <laughs> I love it. Anything goes when, you, when you're on your way great. to the Super Bowl. Anything goes. I love that it. That wasn't quite Richard Sherman right. with Aaron Andrews from six years ago. That is a great moment from a guy a little controversial way the Chiefs acquired him. They let D. Ford go, traded D. Ford away to San Francisco, let Justin Houston go, traded a lot of picks and gave him a ton of money, but he's come up huge in the postseason. Yeah, it was, it was interesting to see the emotion that, that he had after the game and, and the amount of confidence he had in the statements that he made. Coming into the game. After the game. Well, yeah, the, yeah. I, I'm curious to see if he's going to take that same aggressive verbal approach against the 49ers. I think you should double down, <laughs> right. throw it on the table, say exactly what's going to happen. And Listen, man, the 49ers got multiple rushers. I don't know. He just he was very confident before the game that Derrick Henry was not going to continue his run, and he yeah, backed it, it up. I'm not a huge fan of the trash talk, but if you can back it up like that, bring it. Keep bringing it. The concern I have is just that the low energy level, and <laughs> what you want to see is just more from these yeah. guys. And the reporter the there, if I may shout him out, James Palmer. I used to do, I used to work with him in Houston. Oh. Some of my first ever television stuff was with him on a regional network in Houston. He's doing a great job with the NFL. I've I done interviews where a guy starts cursing, and at one point you want to stop the interview, and then it, then and then you go, uh, you know what, just yeah. just go. Oh, at one point, we're just, just, just take a time and do your thing. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how he's feeling about that prediction at 17 to 7. He was a, as confident at that moment. Uh, he had 15 we're, on the other we're side. One, one, of those, uh, that's one of those salty <laughs> cursing coaches, Coach Mangini. I mean, we weren't going to talk about that, but we could. It's all right, though. But Sorry look how far it. he's come. I, 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 <laughs> I uh, on to the Packers and Niners now in San Francisco. Absolutely dominated this one thanks to Raheem Mostert. 29 carries, 220 yards, four touchdowns. In fact, the first player in NFL history with four rushing touchdowns in a conference championship game. Niners won this easily 37-20. to 20. Coach, do you think this was more about what the Niners did or the Packers' lackluster performance? It, it's so unbelievable that a game was won where the quarterback threw eight passes. And I, I think the last time was, was 1974? 73, yeah. 1973. That, that's unbelievable. And, and from a, a defensive perspective, when you have no ability to stop the run, it, it's demoralizing. It, it affects every aspect of the game. And Use the analogy you talked with me about, because I didn't it, have older well, brothers. Well, I had two older brothers, and, and sometimes my older brother Kyle would hold me down, and then, you know, as older brothers do, kind of a little bit of taunting, and that's that's what it feels like. You can't you can't stop it, and and. Um, as a defensive coach, what what are your emotions watching what's happening? It's uh, it was painful. It was painful <laughs> to watch, and and I, I felt empathy for everybody on the on the Green Bay sideline because you know that they've talked about run fits. You know that they've talked about the importance of of forcing the outside run and 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 having it come back. And and it's not like they did. The running game just snuck up on him like hey the, you're allowed to run the ball but that's what it looked like at, at, at the end of the day and it's it's amazing that they were only down by two scores in the second half with as bad as as those run fits were it, it's a helpless feeling helpless. Out there. i had three older helpless. sisters i didn't have brothers but they used to do that to me too because oh. <laughs> i was the youngest they'd hold me down and literally you're feeling like I have no, like, I can't unless somebody comes to save me. Mom, Dad, where are you? And that's And I'm in that sure. case, in Kansas City, it's Patrick Mahomes. Yes, that's kind of, exactly. That's what comes to save me. Exactly, time. but I'm sure that's what the Packers were feeling like, too. What more can I do? Can I put eight guys around the box? And it doesn't matter. Um, they keep having all the success. 
And I do think it's a tribute to Shanahan and the commitment to the run, which I do think he inherited that from his dad. Because I think a lot of coaches would look and say, man, we need to be, maybe we need to balance it out a little bit more. And, of course, it's easier when you're having these chunk plays. You're hardly even in any third down situations. But I do think the commitment to say, you know what? We have this game in the can. Now we're just going to kind of embarrass this team. And it's not an intentional embarrassment. It's because we can, we're just going to cram this down your throat. And that sends a message to the next opponent as well. But in the first half of this game, as dominant as the Niners offense was through the rushing attack their defense was just as dominant and this is what was i feel so dumb because the day after these two teams played the first time i sat right here on the show and i said green bay can't beat this team they, 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 the the mismatch of the big people offensive line versus defensive line defensive line versus offensive line are both so heavily in san francisco's favor that's not going to change at any point this year and then like in Doofus, I picked the Packers anyway, I think mostly because I just really wanted to see a, a Rodgers-Mahomes Super Bowl. But the, this was, Coach, all the things we talked about last week that went wrong for Green Bay, that made the first game more lopsided than it should have been, they did again. They had the turnovers in the first half that were killer. The, okay, we're going to go into halftime down, but it's not going to be awful, and then you allow a score in the final minute of the Another first half. Another slow start. So, Another all slow of start it. Like, of it was, instead of being 23 nothing, it was 27 nothing. Instead of Rodgers having one turnover in the first half, he had two turnovers in the Protection. first half. Protection. Couldn't protect him. Absolutely. It was, it was all the issues. It was like they didn't make any adjustments from what their their week 12 matchup or maybe they they just didn't have the horses to make the adjustment in the in the first game the turnover was a strip sack wasn't it yes and in this game it was a quarterback center exchange which that that's you rarely no but he also had a strip sack that. but they just recovered but they recovered yeah. but I, but I, the, you rarely see a quarterback center exchange problem like that especially from this from point the season. yeah at this point in the season and, and from a from a guy like that and then the interception and that was so uncharacteristic of a throw of it, it's a seam Pass that he underthrows, and it, it was the right read. He just, it was a poor throw. Like, that was surprising as well. But all that being said, when you have, when they can go out there and just do whatever they want in the running game, they don't have to throw the ball, it's, it has an effect on the whole group in, in the sense that, you know, we're going to have to go make something happen, and we're going to have to press to try to make this in any kind of a game. But this isn't the first time he was seeing that that defense, Aaron Rodgers. He had just seen them, and we. So you said earlier, you know, he looked like he was just startled to to start the season. Mm -hmm. He was thrown off his game. Back in week 12, he just saw basically the same team in the same game plan. You can't get your team ready for that? No, you can try, but I think it's more to do with the horses. And I think that's a credit to the 49ers defense. I mean, it's tough to block a Nick Bosa. You know, you got to really make sure you're sliding protections toward him, getting some help. If you leave somebody alone on an island with him, it is going to be massive issues for you. But it doesn't matter who you are as a quarterback. If it's Tom Brady, Drew Brees, even if it's Patrick Mahomes, if you can get to them and pressure them and hit them repeatedly, which they did in the first half, it will make you look pedestrian. And I thought that's what happened. The pressure started to impact him again, and then that's where the carryover for the last game was like, man, right. I'm, I don't have time that I but normally do. I have to make a play here, or I have to throw it a step earlier, and that throws you off. And, and, and I would agree with you if, if the if it had been another strip sack situation where he lost, but, and, and I know there was one of those too, or if the interception had been just as he was getting hit, it, it, it just felt, it felt more, uh, it felt different. It, th those mistakes to me seem much more like unforced errors than San Francisco imposing their will. But on the flip side of that, going off the field every time and seeing what was happening to your defense, mm -hmm. that's pretty demoralizing too. They just, I, I, I know that in some circles, LaFleur is going to get crushed today. Rookie head coach and seemed to be totally outclassed by Shanahan. I think, I think we have the two best offensive minds in football in the Super Bowl. I think Kyle Shanahan has earned that right with what he's done every step of his way as coordinator and now this year in San Francisco. And obviously Andy Reid's earned that right over the last quarter century. But I don't think this was, maybe LaFleur could have done a little more during the week to make it less lopsided. But this was, I could, I, if I sat here and arm wrestled coach and he crushes me, there's no adjustment I can make before next time we do it again. He's going to beat me every time because he's bigger and stronger than me. You know what I mean? Like, yep. they're, 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 it's not, oh, I didn't scheme for it right. They were the bigger and stronger team. We saw it in week 12, and I just foolishly thought somehow that was going to change when I think in reality, we knew what, what the Packers had to happen 
was to make Jimmy Garoppolo a leading character in this movie, and instead Jimmy Garoppolo was an extra. Anybody could have been playing quarter. He almost threw a pick early. He was it, a, he was an extra in a crowd scene. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah. Way in the back. I mean, he almost threw a pick early. Kevin King got his hands on the ball, and then I don't think Kyle Shanahan let him throw a pass for another hour and a half. Like literally, right. I think they just ran the ball for an hour and a half and en route to a huge lead. Going into this game, though, if I said how many difference makers does each team have on either side of the ball? It's significantly, you could give a litany of guys from the 49ers, yeah. you're giving a, a, a small group, not even, maybe just two or three. Both Smiths, Devontae, Rodgers, and Aaron Jones is the full list for the Packers. Right. The and Niners maybe have ten. Yeah. All right, stick around, Coach. Coming up, did Patrick Mahomes prove that he is the best player in the world? That's next on First. Did he, Coach? Come on, Coach. Did he? I'll wait till the second. Okay. Okay. <laughs>